Greetings, I'm John Henry. Welcome to Live on Location at Y East Pizza. This is Next Paperback Hero. What else could we do but walk away? Take a break and give the room some space To breathe, I need to breathe Suffocating, gasping for relief Teardrops in the water drift away How many times could we let it slide? Each sly remark a spear thrust in your side. Now you're bleeding out. Remove my belt to wrap around the wound that nearly pierced your heart. Teardrops in the water drift away. Teardrops in the water drift Like boggles from the shore Show us what we knew was there before Gentle waves on summer days Become our lullabies Rock us back and forth We close our eyes Close your eyes Take all the moments that you need The mixtape now has liner notes for you to read For your eyes only And if you're feeling lonely Put your headphones on and fall into the sound Teardrops in the water drift away Marvelous. Thank you. All right, all right. Nathan Honoré of Next Paperback Hero. Thanks for being here with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. How are you feeling? Real good. All right, all right. I understand why East Pizza has a special meaning for you. Uh, so could you tell us about that and then tell us about yourself? Yeah, uh, Y East Pizza is a favorite in our household. We uh, It was like a special pizza place for us for a very long time, like uh, kind of the casual anniversary sort of deal um or date night and then during the pandemic it turned into like our super happy space in terms of uh taking it home and having that be part of our ritual so it's uh it's become a weekly presence in the honoré household that uh really brings us a lot of joy right okay that's the reason for the location yeah yeah and uh now tell me about next paperback hero yeah, uh, Next Paperback Hero is how I've been uh, presenting myself and my music for the last couple years. Um, I describe it as like indie rock, indie folk sort of thing. Um, just uh, try to be as emotive and, uh, and genuine and real focus on the songwriting sort of deal. And, and uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of can go in a lot of different directions. I play a lot solo. I have uh, other people I play with. and. and yeah, that's just how I pre how the the packaging I guess for for what I do. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it live most recently at the Crafty Cow. Yes, yeah, sir. And uh, you also had uh, your brother there with you, which mm -hmm. is awesome, AJ. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Joe, a Joe Ludwig. I was unfamiliar with his work. <laughs> seemed, seemed Some to, guy. Yeah, seemed seemed to write on bass though. So that's that's pretty cool. It's great seeing you there. Yeah, um, thank you. Your most recent project was Nowhere to Run. Yeah. Uh, that was. Yeah, that's pretty recent. Tell me, tell me about uh, the making of these albums. Um, oh, and specifically the, the larger album, Morning Skies, 
and heavy eyes. Yeah. And the process for making that. Yeah, both uh, Morning Skies and Heavy Eyes, that's the full record. Uh, and then um, Nowhere to Run is the EP I put out last year. Both of them were recorded in a similar way. Uh, I re- did them all by myself at home. Uh, for the most part, I had a few people, uh, like my brother AJ, he played uh, trumpet on a few tracks. Um, my college roommate and, and lifelong friend uh, Nick Zulik played saxophone. Um, like, but I recorded it all at home with uh, just a couple of mics, kind of as a proof of concept. Like, can this actually work? Can this be a can this achieve the quality that I want for for uh, this level? And to present an album and have that kind of uh, artistic statement out in the world. Um, Morning Skies and Heavy Eyes was largely done in the early half of pandemic life uh so there wasn't really an option to do the studio which kind of forced my hand and say like you have to try this and put your money where your mouth is like you have some stuff you have some abilities i'm not the greatest at any of them but like this is what you have so either do or do not yeah yeah and you did yeah no this is what i heard um for that morning skies heavy eyes album you did a lot of like voice notes and and you know memos and you know as artists you know they i know people can relate to that just wherever you can get the idea down yeah. but that you were inspired by going to like an actual like morning sky event you'd be there at like 7 a.m yeah uh at grant park yeah at the uh, seven bridges like? uh right by grant on uh, right on lake michigan uh that became part of i'm a very ritual like based guy a very routine um, I can change them at the drop of a hat, which I had to, you know, do during for the pandemic. Like everything that I did before, can't really do that right now. So, going to Seven Bridges almost every morning because um, we get my wife and I get up very early. We have a we have a dog, and she she waits for no one. So I'm up like, and I would go down there uh, and just walk for an hour or so and pretty quick after going down and starting that as like the routine um, I'd start having ideas starting coming to me and started to really utilize the voice memos it would be either just lyrics or lyric and melody uh, it, it came in all sh- shapes and sizes but yeah the voice memo was there to capture um, everything and then I'd get home and you know, try and translate it to guitar and keep uh, going from there. Yeah, it was uh, just seeing Lake Michigan at like 7 a.m. is uh, it can be a really special thing when it's uh, uh, clear out and the the lake is just right. It's it's really beautiful. I'm gonna try that. Okay, and the uh, the outcome of it speaks for itself. You know, uh, your your album was you know on lists, end of the year lists. You always making those. You know. Um, a lot of us are trying to get on there, but your work is getting on there, man. It's like, you know, you got uh, a, a lot of uh, recognition, you know, so it's like you can see that it uh, it really, you were coming up with good stuff out there. So um, with that said, you, what else you got for us? Let's get into some more. Yeah, uh, I'm going to play a song. It's, it's, it's one that I released as like a single without doing any real professional mixing or anything like that. It's called Home Now. It's one I did with an older band. Um, but it's one that like stayed with me and that continues through like what I was and where I am now. Um, so it's uh, it's one that has helped me find my footing and and you know from transitioning from one to the other and kind of that through line. So this one is called Home Now. All right, thank you. I wonder why it feels so strange Hard times Coming in waves Waves crashing over Waves crashing closer I wonder how we made it here Long nights Feeding the fear Fear of our failure Fear of our failures Now I know I'm home now the 
the bell will toll Old days Days growing cold Cold brings us closer Cold brings us closure Marvelous, marvelous. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, home now. That was beautiful. Thank you very much. All right, so I want to talk uh, about finding your voice. And we spoke a little bit about this earlier. Um, in several ways, I feel like I've, I've, I've seen you describe changes that you've made and realizations that you've made um, as far as the, the type of work you want to do, the art you want to make. So um, you were in a band, uh, at least one, where you you know you decided maybe some parts of what you were doing you wanted to change. Yeah. Be it um, something like literal finding your voice in terms of register, uh, or finding your voice in terms of yeah like the type of sound you want to make and your approach. So could you just talk about what that what that journey has been like? Yeah, I mean it is it really is all facets of of finding voice and uh, finding myself in different ways uh, there's there was a couple of things that pointed to that and and like the biggest phrase that always come I always come back to when thinking about it is just because you can doesn't always mean you should like I have a certain range of my voice of my literal voice and uh, I always figured that if you can sing high, you should, and like that's a good, that's an easy way to get people's attention. That is an easy way to, uh, to rise above all the other noise, like liter almost literally. Um, but that's not the best part of my voice, and like I had, I had gigs where people came up to me and said you should get voice lessons, like. Um, and like I had a cello player in a band and like somebody came up to me and literally said, okay, you have these two recordings, which one has more cello and less voice? And I was like, that's something to say to the lead singer of the, of the band, but it, it like, nobody was ill will about any of it, yeah, yeah. but it, there's a lot I, I could feel from that and um, the strain I was having on my voice. Um, and it, I just knew that I needed to step back from a lot of that so that I could find, have the space to find what makes the most sense for me in, in all ways. Uh, I didn't really enjoy like the, the presentation of the music. Um, if I was going through the motions, I was a terrible band leader, like uh, dictatorial at times, and, or going too far the opposite, like I just couldn't find balance. So I knew I needed to go back to myself, and I'd never played by myself really um, when I was in high school or college or anything. Like I, I just have always had a band, um, and I needed to try and to see what would happen. And I found pretty quickly that the part of me that feels the most natural and the part that people respond to the most is the same, and that's a different completely different register of my voice singing in a place that feels physically good yeah. it translates what I'm um, the lyrics and the music 
it fits. It's like that perfect puzzle piece that that's fitting in there. But I didn't I didn't give myself space to find that at any other point. So um, I had to step away from all of that so I could find my literal voice, and that also helped me just write and to have things feel more genuine. To have um, just to, like I said, that kind of presentation that more of what I wanted to do, something that I felt proud of. Um, I take a lot of pride in having songs being able to take several forms. Like if, uh, if a song is strong enough, I feel like it should hold up to different presentations and, and different approaches and different instrumentation and all that. So I wanted to incorporate all of that because I, I knew that my songs before that couldn't do that. Like if I played them by myself, they were garbage. Like <laughs> it, it was, uh, it, it took some harsh feedback, I guess, for me to, to take that look in the mirror. And yes. uh, it takes you that. paying attention to like what, like, exactly. you know, the outer like feedback and stimuli or whatever, you know, yeah. like you had to listen to it too. Some people are getting told things and they're not hearing it and they don't know what to do with it. But you took all those things and you were able to, you know, make changes for the better, you know, exactly. and you could feel the change that you, okay, now, now it feels more right. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's an incredible story. I like that. Those little things, yeah, you, you, uh, you caught them and uh, made the right changes. Sounded smooth. No, and you're still, you're still doing some beautiful high notes, but you're a baritone. Yeah. What absolutely. am I? Am I a baritone? I don't know, man. You're like, you, you, you go, like, your speaking voice is so uh, silky and low. We both got some low. We got the lower register thing going on. Baritone voice. Let's, yeah, just, there you let's go. just call it that. Baritone voice. Uh, all right. Marvelous. Yeah, it, sound, it, sound, it sounds real good. So um, give us another one. What, what you got for us? Uh, next one is from um, the Nowhere to Run EP. It's called I Want to Be Sure. And it's actually one that I, uh, I had written it in response to a prompt. Uh, I started to try to do some writing prompts about a year ago from uh, Peter Mulvey. Um, he had, has this group. I don't remember what the prompt was, but like I was finding it as a nice impetus to try and write in some stuff uh, a little outside of my comfort zone. And I, I think I wrote in the span of like 24 hours, like 50 choruses for this song. And many of them came, like I was using the voice memos a little unsafely while I was driving to and from uh, Y East uh, one night. And because I had a gig on Saturday and it was like Friday night and I was like, I think I can figure this out before Saturday night. Like I think I can crack the code if I just keep going and find the right combination of syllables and stuff like that so on my way to and from y east is i i did crack what i think i cracked the code on the, on the chorus so the y east magic yeah That's absolutely good. all right <laughs> to hide now nowhere to run old words echo like mocking birds play back again now nowhere to run I want to be sure be sure this time if that's what it takes I'll reach for the sky I want to be yours if you're either or I want to be sure Cease fire combustible high wire count out the steps now nowhere to run Got one shot to give it our best shot. The spotlight is on now. Nowhere to run. I want to be sure, be sure this time. If that's what it takes, I'll reach for the sky. I want to be yours if you're either or. I want to be sure Next move, no 
this late night Lit up by brake lights No place to hide now I want to be sure Be sure this time If that's what it takes I'll reach for the sky I want to be yours If you're either or I want to be sure I like that smile you have when you wrap up, you know? (laughs) Feels good, right? Absolutely, yeah. That that was not there before, I can tell you that for sure. (laughs) All right, all right. So uh, one of the themes, or yeah, one of the themes uh, I've seen in your music is just about hope and hopelessness. Um, And I think you cover both uh, in your your catalog. So I want to ask about another you know journey another story that you have to tell uh, about a health scare and a recovery so can you tell me about that yeah about uh going into christmas uh this in of 2022 um i ended up having a blood clot in my uh in my leg that had turned into an infection and landed me in the hospital a few days before christmas um before it seemed like just flu stuff and everyone was looking for COVID, RSV or whatever. And it was none of those. So it was, it led to kind of a, you need to go to the hospital now situation. So I was there for a couple of days and um, I had a, a somewhat lengthy, relatively lengthy recovery in terms of not being able to, to really walk very well um, for, for a while after I got out as um, the medicine and everything started to work. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a rough, a rough way to ring in 2023. (laughs) Was it also like scary a little? Yeah. I mean, um, I'd never been hospitalized before. I've been very lucky and, uh, for all of my health, uh, things that have happened to me, I've never actually had to be there. But um, to constantly have like a 103 degree fever and have my leg be swollen up and not know what's happening and have all the doctors not be able to tell me what's happening, it's like, okay, uh, is this uh, is this the la- is this the last hurrah right now? Like, right, right. That's very natural. Yeah, like uh, I, I'm not necessarily afraid of of death like I wasn't like no not now not me like it was just like okay is this is this it yeah how bad is it you know I don't know like you've never even been hospitalized so just being there is like that yeah what what um what was the turnaround like as you start to to get better like did um did it affect you in a way did it make you see the world any different yeah it was uh I I was at home I had home care and I had like the the home IV in my arm for quite a while afterwards and like once I felt comfortable enough to start playing music again, like I, I was like, this is gonna make me feel good. Like this is my safe spot. Like yeah. this is something that's gonna make me just uh, release some endorphins and, yeah. and help me feel better. And the first time I picked up my guitar, it just felt awful. Like I just was, it felt like something was missing. I felt defeated. I yeah. felt small, um, weak. Like every. It was just uh, incredibly uh, hard, and I think it was accented because I had hoped it was going to do the opposite, and it ended up being like this, <laughs> you know, really scary in that way. Like um, at first, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I had a moment where I just looked at all of my guitars, all of my gear, and I'm like, I just want to sell everything and and stop. And uh, this this isn't right. Like this isn't me anymore. Luckily, I did not follow through with that. Uh, and about a week later, after I talked to some friends and, and my wife and just like talked through it all about what I was feeling, um, received some good advice to just try to persevere and try to continue, try to push through it, but not in an unhealthy way. Like, don't force yourself to do anything that you don't want to, yeah. but give yourself the space to come back to it. and. Uh, I won't say it's like a new lease on life or like my music or anything like that, but I, I 
I think I'm, I'm glad that I was able to have a moment where I could step back and say, is this something that I really want to continue trying to do as a 35 year old, like right now, is this something that I need to be doing? And, you know, I, I asked myself that at the start of the pandemic. I started asked myself that before I started playing as next paperback hero. And I think it's important to have those check-in moments. Like, do, yeah. do I have something that is worth sharing with the world? Like, you yeah. need enough ego to say that you do. Um, and I just need to make sure that I still had faith in that I, I, in myself. And, like, my stuff is strong enough I, uh, to present to the world. And it is something to share. Um, so yeah. it, it, it was another good check-in point in my yeah. life to say, keep going. Yep. Yeah, uh, a lot of people can relate to that. That sounds very familiar. You, you, those check-ins and just asking, what do I get out of this? And we're very glad that uh, you came up with this answer, <laughs> which is to continue, because uh, we enjoy it so much. You're a pleasure to have as a guest, and I'm sorry that we uh, you know, can only do one or two more, but I'd love to hear them. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And thank you again for, for having me. And uh, yeah, this is a, like, I love this play, so to be to playing here feels pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna play a song from Morning Skies and Heavy Eyes. Excuse me while I'm tuning. Uh, make sure it's all good. Uh, called "Say the Word," and it's one that definitely found its shape and um, fin- did most of the writing during the right during the recording of Morning Skies and Heavy Eyes. And it's one that, t- for me, there's some ultra specific things in it. Um, and I almost didn't want to include it because it felt too personal in some ways. But it's like that, that adage of like, the more personal you get, the more universal it becomes. And it's one that I've probably had the most people reach out or um, react to or respond to in a positive way. So I'm glad that it uh, has that effect so I'm happy to, to play it today thank you Dance on the shore Between the waves And the lake's dull roar At the dawn of the day I want to wash these fears away But I feel as though we're in a war I've never been afraid like I am right now We've skipped the why and managed to forget the how Now everything's unstable Though I'll fight while I am able We've been riding on the rails Till the rails run out Say I'll be there if you want me to Say Say the word and I'll come running Say Do you remember all those things we used to say Just one click between We slowly redefine what the word distance means I'm at the top of the stairs I'm looking down, I'm looking scared If I fire a flare, will you see me? So what in the world are we waiting for? Why do I feel we've been here before? have the courage to say I remember 
We're in a world at war, what are we waiting for? Well, I got something to say, well, I just wanted to say.